So you watch one of my vending machine videos and you see me pulling out stacks and stacks of money, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And you're like, yo, I wanna start a vending machine business too. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna tell you how not to start a vending machine business. Tips and tricks on what not to do when you're starting a vending machine business. So let's get into the video, right? So the first thing you're not gonna do when starting a vending machine business is buying the vending machine before you have the location. I get text messages, DMs, TikTok messages, emails all the time and people tell me, yo, Donald, I found this beautiful vending machine. It's only $1,000, it's $500, $700, it has a car reader on it, it, has everything I want, it's a combo vending machine, whatever it is. And people are like, should I buy this machine? And the question I ask them all the time is, do you have a location? If you don't have the location, don't buy the machine. There's always gonna be another opportunity to buy the vending machine. You don't have to feel pressed or you don't have to feel like, oh my goodness, if I don't buy this vending machine right now, I'm never gonna find a vending machine. Like, don't think like that. Even though I say this like all the time, people are like, why shouldn't I do that? Because you might think like, oh, why don't I buy the vending machine? So like find the location, I could just put the vending machine in the location. People make it seem easy getting locations. And then they actually go outside to try to find locations. And then they realize that, yo, getting locations is super, super hard because you're gonna get a lot of no's. You're gonna get a lot of rejections. A lot of people are gonna say they don't need your service. And when they start doing that, people are like, whoa, I have a $5,000 vending machine sitting in my driveway, sitting in my backyard, and I can't find a location for it. So the best strategy to not put so much money down into it is to find the location before you find the vending machine also if you buy a snack vending machine and the location wants to drink vending machine then you just spent thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars buying that snack machine and the location wants to drink vending machine or vice versa or whatever right so you don't know what type of um, vending machine the location that you might have might want now you might buy the vending machine and the vending machine is too big to put in the location and you might need a smaller vending machine you might have bought two a snack and a drink vending machine and then you realize whoa that location is too small and they need a combo vending machines you guys see the problem I'm talking about? This is why I tell people, don't ever buy the vending machine before you have the location. You wanna make sure you have the location secured. I'm talking about secured, secured, secured. I'm talking about contracts in place and people are saying like, yo, we want this vending machine in here next week. We want this vending machine in here in two weeks, whatever it is, like that type of security. Not just, oh, we could put a vending machine. No, we signed a contract, everything is good. Everything is square and you're all good to go to put this vending machine in this location. Another thing, don't just buy vending machines without testing the vending machines. I bought this vending machine and it's still sitting here. You wanna make sure that you're testing all your machines. The only reason this vending machine, I could have fixed it, but it costs so much money to fix that it's not even worth fixing this vending machine, guys, right? I bought this vending machine for $300, but it's missing like all the pieces electrical wires are are gone that are cut this has a lot of problems but it got cold though right that's like the biggest problem that drink machines have like they don't get cold so i bought this vending machine thinking that oh i just need to put like 150 200 into this vending machine and it's gonna be good you got me <laughs> It, it wasn't the case, right? So what I ended up doing, I stripped the vending machine for parts. I took out the bill acceptor. That's the thing that the money goes through. I took out the condenser. That's the thing that makes it cold. And now I have $300 worth of parts. So I didn't fully lose. When you're buying vending machines, right? What not to do is just trust people and believe that everything works. Test everything. For example, make the person show you that the vending machine works, right? For a snack vending machine. You wanna make sure that everything is working. You wanna make sure that it's accepting quarters, nickels, dimes. You wanna make sure that it's accepting dollar bills, $5 bills if it can. You wanna make sure that all the coils are spinning. For a drink vending machine, you wanna make sure that all the selections work. If it's a six stack vending machine, if it's a 32 vending machine, you wanna make sure that all those selections work. You wanna make sure that the vending machine gets cold. A big problem with drink vending machines is that they don't get cold. And people all the time on Facebook Marketplace are selling like drink vending machines and they're selling it to the ridiculously low. And they're saying, oh, the, the condenser doesn't work. That's all you have to fix. But understand, the condenser is probably one of the most expensive things to fix on a vending machine. Like when people ask me about repairs on a vending machine, everything on a vending machine you could probably fix. You could change out bill acceptors, you could change out coin mechs, you could change out motherboards and stuff like that. There's videos on YouTube that go in full detail on how to do these type of things. But the condenser, you're gonna actually need a vending machine repair person to come and to fix the vending machine. So make sure you're keeping that in mind. When, when someone's like, oh, you just need to fix the condenser, right? No matter how low the, the cost is, I would not buy a drink vending machine that I have to fix the condenser. No, wait, let me take that back. I wouldn't say never. Nine out of 10 times, I'm not buying a drink vending machine that doesn't have a bad condenser. Because usually when I'm buying machines, they have to go on locations, right? Next, what you're not gonna do when starting a vending machine business is just go and buy vending machine locations because somebody's selling it. Being that buying a vending machine location is the easiest way to get started, you have to understand that. If somebody's selling their location, eight times out of 10, they're not making a lot of money because why in the world would you sell a cash cow like put that in your mind if i'm making so much money off this location why would i want to sell it to you the only times i like to buy like vending machines on locations is when big companies are selling because they're like oh 
it's just another I'm, I'm trying to get out the business i've been in the business for 30 years i made all my money i don't need this i don't need this money anymore i'm ready to retire go on vacation spend time with my family those are the type of deals i'm looking for because those are the people that's just trying to get out the business they're not trying to, to inflate the price on you you go to facebook marketplace and you got people that are selling um vending machines with the locations for ten thousand dollars that only make two hundred dollars a month so you want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence when it's coming to buying vending machines on location so you're not just going to go cash in hand and be like here i'm ready to buy the location here's all my money if the vending machine has a card reader you could get bank statements and those bank statements could tell you how much the vending machine is actually generating every single month if the vending machine doesn't have any card readers now you're gonna have to do it like a couple extra steps you're gonna have to survey the location by yourself you're gonna have to go to the location see how the foot traffic is see if people are buying ask people around hey do people use this vending machine oh what's your favorite snack in this vending machine what would you want to see in this vending machine you want to ask people that like you want to make sure that people are actually using the machine last thing people are always in my comments and they always ask me like hey do you have to pay rent to place do you have to pay commission i'm here to tell you guys i do not pay any commission at any of my vending machine locations you know how i don't pay commission don't bring it up i know it sounds crazy to believe that i don't pay rent but it's true. I tell people when they ask me in the comments, I'm a service provider. I'm providing a service for you, right? That's how you're pitching to companies. Like, hey, there's no stores around your business. So that means when your employees get hungry, they might have to leave the building. If you want your employees to stay in the building, I can offer you a vending machine. And this vending machine can give them snacks and drinks when they're hungry to make them stay in the building longer. That means you're providing them a service. I know it might be hard for people to fathom it, but that's really the truth. Like I go and I pitch to companies like, hey, I'm a service provider. This is my service. This is my business. And I'm going to help your company out. While helping your company, I'm also going to help your customers out because your customers can benefit from me having this vending machine here. It's like a mini store in your company. So when you're going to pitch to these companies, don't bring up that you're going to pay them commission. Don't even mention it unless they mention it. I understand if it's a high quality location and there's like a lot of foot traffic, it's a big factory and they might ask for commission. This is what you tell them. This, this is my favorite line. This is what I tell people when they're going to, oh, do you have to pay commission? I say, hey, let me keep the vending machine here for 60 days. If the vending machine is making an adequate amount of money, we can rediscuss and we can talk about commission then because they have to understand that like the commission is eating into your profits, right? If you pay too much commission, it could eat into your profits and you probably won't be profitable in the vending machine business. And when those 60 days are up and if you're satisfied, you get offered five, 10%, 10% at the highest, depending on how much it's making. If it's a very, very good location and they want like 30%, if it's amazing, make it a win-win for both of you guys. If it's a lot of foot traffic, I've seen people that give like 30%, even 50% if the location is doing like crazy astronomical numbers. It only makes sense. People talk about electricity. Vending machines don't take as much electricity as people may think. So they might be thinking, oh my goodness, it's on 24-7. A lot of vending machines, like they, they literally like shut down. Like they go into like energy saving mode. So keep that in mind. Like a vending machine is running 24 hours, but it's not really running 24 hours. If you understand what I'm saying. And the last thing I want to mention before I get off this video, I'm tired of grown men coming in my comments and trying to put fear into people. Trying put fear into the hearts of my of my subscribers like oh my goodness vending machine business is so hard and you're not profitable and you can't make money and you have to pay for locations and you can't find a local yo if you're scared just say that if you don't want to invest just say that when you get into this vending machine business it's gonna be hard if something is worthwhile in life it's most likely gonna be hard you feel me you just have to choose your heart like being rich is hard and being poor is hard like pick which hard that you want right you're gonna get a lot of no's for me a no no just means the next opportunity and there's some people that they, they try they, they they try for a few weeks they get a couple of no's and they say oh my goodness it wasn't working for me go harder if you need to call 300 businesses and you need to to go and knock on that many doors you need to hand out your business card that's what you're gonna have to do to win that's what you're gonna have to do to get your first location if you're gonna have to tell every one of your family members if you're gonna have to post a thousand instagram videos to get your name out there that you're in the vending machine business that's what you're gonna have to do that you feel me just say you scared just say you're broke just say you don't want to make the money just say you don't want to work hard just say that i'm gonna tell you in this video everything i wish i knew before i started a vending machine business so i've been doing vending machines for about two years now i'm generating about five figures a year doing vending machines first vending machines are very heavy please do not underestimate the weight of vending machines and how big they are vending machines are super heavy in my experience drink vending machines are more heavier than snack vending machines because drink vending machines they have like the condenser if you plan to move the vending machine by yourself you want to make sure that you have a lot of help in the past i used u-hauls to move vending machines right it came to a point where i was buying so many u-hauls i told myself like yo instead of buying the u-haul i'm gonna cut u-haul and i was gonna buy a pickup truck and the pickup truck allowed me to move vending machines a lot when i started moving vending machines i made damages to 
of places i damage floors i damage walls all the above right the way i suggest that you move vending machines is actually to hire vending machine movers vending machine movers they cost about 150 dollars per machine professionals that are going to come and make your life a lot easier than what you already are doing number two make sure that you buy the right vending machine for the right location you have to understand your demographic and where you're putting the vending machines in right so you don't want to buy a snack vending machine where you're supposed to put a drink vending machine and a drink vending machine where you're supposed to put a snack vending machine you want to put the right vending machine in the right location understand that different vending machines have different uses right and there's a lot of different types of vending machines in terms of drink vending machines you might have some drink vending machines that are six selections you might have some drink vending machines that are 32 selections you just have to know your demographic are there a lot of people or is there do a lot of people have different options of what they want to drink so you just have to make sure that you're buying the right vending machine right in terms of buying the right vending machine you want to make sure that you're measuring out your spaces you want to make sure that the place that you're putting the vending machine fits right also my personal opinion i like snack and drink vending machines right next to each other right put a combo vending machine in a place that's very small problems with combo vending machines is that combo vending machines you have to restock it all the time because they get empty if the location has a lot of people a lot of foot traffic a lot of people are using the vending machine then you're gonna have to refill that combo machine up multiple multiple times because when we first started we had two combo machines in a location and i was like wow we're not getting that many sales we should have had a snack vending machine and a 32 selection drink machine to fulfill that space because two combo vending machines really wasn't doing the job right bulk vending machines we had a we had a location that they bought a lot of candy right it was a bunch of kids in the location so guess what i decided to do i decided to put a triple head vending machine they're called bulk vending bulk vending machines i decided to put that in the location because i realized that there's a bunch of kids and i could i need to capitalize on right some kids might not have a dollar fifty for, for skittles but most of them have 25 cents for skittles most of them have 25 cents for gumballs so keep that in mind when you're putting vending machines in locations right people ask me all the time yo donald why don't you ever put ice cream vending machines food vending machines coffee vending machines i was told by an experienced vending machine owner someone that's been in the game for like 30 plus years they told me those machines are for like higher end locations if you're if you have a high end location that wants it put it in but understand this if someone unplugs your food vending machine unplugs your ice cream vending machine you lose all your product if the location loses electricity you lose a lot of products so keep that in mind when you're buying those type of vending machines stick to snack and soda vending machines because they're a lot simpler if somebody unplugs my snack machine nothing's gonna happen if somebody unplugs my drink machine vending machine not a lot of stuff is gonna happen right just keep that in mind the next thing don't buy the vending machine unless you have a location people buy vending machines and they don't have locations for the vending machine and they wonder why their business is failing you want to buy vending machines when you have the location because if you don't have the location the asset is gonna sit and the asset that doesn't sit does not make any money people are like oh my goodness donald i see this deal on facebook marketplace should i get it donald this is three hundred dollars for a vending machine five hundred dollars for a vending machine donald should i buy it and i tell them all the time if you don't have a location don't buy it someone even told me in my comments their son bought 10 vending machines and he had no locations he stuck with 10 vending machines he stuck with all his money being lost you just want to make sure that you have the location first secure it like, you don't go buy one when someone says oh you might be able to put in the vending machine no we, we secure it we have a contract in place we have a verbal agreement in place to say that hey i could put my vending machine in this location and the fourth thing this is going to be the last thing is make sure that you test every vending machine you don't want to buy a vending machine that you cannot test you don't want to buy a broken vending machine but ask me how do you inspect vending machines this is what you're going to do for a snack vending machine just going to make sure that all the coils work you're going to go a1 b1 c1 until you get every single coil of the vending machine you're going to make sure that it accepts quarters nickels dimes every form of payment if that is a car reader make sure that the car reader works also if as a car reader what you have to do you have to call the company to get it transferred into your name into your bank account and everything else for a drink vending machine you want to make sure that all the selections work as well a1 b1 c1 d1 until all the rules b2 b3 if the person doesn't let you test the vending machine please don't buy the vending machine for a drink vending machine you want to make sure that the vending machine gets cold don't get to the location and then turn on the vending machine right you want to tell the owner 15 minutes before you get there hey can you turn on this vending machine hey can you plug the vending machine in before i get there a lot of times i'll see it on facebook marketplace people will be on some junk oh i got the vending machine on the truck and i could bring it right to you i could deliver it to you also too a lot of people keep vending machines in storage units some storage units don't have any plugs they don't have any outlets in the vending machine so you're not able to test the vending machine right one guy was like yo i'm selling you a vending machine for 400 dollars. it doesn't have any plugs so what i did i did like a little creative vr it was a snack vending machine though it wasn't a drink vending machine if it was a drink vending machine i would have said no i told the guy like yo i'll give you 200 dollars because the vending machine was 400 dollars. if the vending machine it doesn't work then I, I keep the vending machine i get it for 200 dollars, and i'll fix whatever problem it has basically right because i know my vending machine repair guy he just charges me 125 dollars and he can fix the whole machine so i told him that he said good he said everything worked did like a video contract saying 
stating both our sides, saying that what's gonna happen. And the vending machine ended up working, everything's fine, and the vending machine's in the location today. But recently, I bought a drink vending machine, and I, in a sense, I got scammed. But in my mind, what I did was I went to the vending machine. I really couldn't test anything because all the boards of the vending machines was like gone, right? All it had was a like, condenser, so I knew the vending machine got cold, but all the boards and stuff was missing. And my vending machine repair guy basically told me like, yo, Don, this is a super old vending machine. To fix this type of vending machine, it's not worth the money. I only spent 300 for the vending machine. My vending machine got restricted for parts, and he put it on my new vending machine that I just purchased, right? Even though I spent 300, I still had $300 in parts, and I'm gonna I'm taking that vending machine to a scrapyard to sell it for like 50 to 100 dollars. So I didn't really lose all my money. And also, I want to say this: when you're inspecting the vending machine, I want you to ask if the vending machine is MDB compatible. MDB compatible means that it can take a car reader. So there's a difference between a 500 and 3,000 dollar vending machine. If a deal on Facebook Marketplace is too good to be true, then it's probably not the deal for you, right? If you see screenshots of vending machines, I stay away from those because I always think that they're a scam. If you see a beautiful vending machine, someone was selling it for like, let's say $300, $400, and it looks too good to be true, probably too good to be true, right? But there's always deals that you can find. Literally, I found a vending machine on Craigslist that this guy was selling for $800. I know, I think he was selling it for $1,900. And I told him I only want one vending machine and he sold it to me for $800. Right? Deals still do exist. But if the deal is too good to be true, don't buy it. If you're getting a very nice location, sometimes it's best just to spend a little more money. Because I try to buy my vending machines from $500 to $1,000. Recently, I bought a vending machine for $1,700. The drink vending machine in that location, it cost $3,000, right? But that location is making upwards of $1,000 a month. So I'm able to get my money back super, super quickly. And I tell people, when you buy a vending machine, make sure you can get the money back in six months. Don't go buy a $5,000 vending machine and then place it in a location that makes $100 a month. You feel me? So you guys have to make it make sense. I didn't mention this, right? Questions that I want you to ask the, the people when you're buying the vending machine. Ask them, what's wrong with the vending machine? Why are you selling? And make sure that they give you adequate reasons. If they're telling you like, oh, I'm selling this vending machine because I got a new vending machine at a location. I like when people say that. That means it was somewhere and it was working. It makes me trust the person more in a sense, right? It's like when you're buying a car and someone's like, oh, I just bought a newer car. So I'm just trying to get rid of my old one right it means that they were driving the car and everything was good it's the same thing as like a vending machine but you still want to inspect the vending machine you still want to make sure that everything is good right and if there's anything wrong with the vending machine you could always bring the price down for example if somebody says hey my bill validator doesn't work the bill validator is what the money goes to you could be like i know a bill validator at cost me 150 dollars so take 150 dollars off the price to buy a new bill validator hey coin mech the coin mech is what you put the change in and how people get back their change if they tell you that doesn't work you could be like i know on ebay they sell them for about 150 dollars as well i could i'm gonna take off 150 dollars right so you just want to take those prices off right find a vending machine repair person in your city in your state type it in on facebook marketplace type it in on google and someone will come my guy charges me 125 dollars and it comes and fixes everything people ask me all the time donald vending machines need a lot of repair and maintenance everything you can probably fix on a vending machine there's videos that show you in great details of everything you need to know on how to fix vending machines what to replace what to take out and everything is fairly simple if you watch the video so you don't have to overcomplicate it and i just wanted to film this video really quickly and i just wanted to shoot it on my phone i want to shoot it in front of my fancy camera to show you guys i'm a regular person and you could do it too you could start your own vending machine business today if you want to hopefully this video saves you two years worth of time and it teaches you everything that i wish i knew before i started my vending machine business right hopefully this video hits home a lot of people put in my comments donald how do you do the taxes and what permits do you need and whoop -de -whoop. I, I try to answer your questions as much as possible but you have to understand a lot of you guys live in different states and you live in different cities and some of your cities and states have different policies i don't really want to go into the taxes of the business because like I don't, i'm not like a financial advisor i can make a video explaining on how i do my tax i can't tell you what to do if you understand what i'm saying i can only give you what i do i'm probably gonna make another video on how to structure your business how to start your llc and stuff because i use ink file to to buy my llc get my ein number i have paypal as my business bank account so i could make a video on how to structure your business on what i did not telling you what to do because this is not financial advice.